Huh. Good morning out there. Yep, it's morning. Welcome to star date being that of March 15th, 2011. Today is the launching of the new Nvidia card, the 550 Ti series. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the full review of a Zeus version of this card. Now, the Zeus version, it features its own special stuff, such as the Direct CU Top. That's what separates this card from a standard reference design card. The core clock on a standard card is at 900 megahertz. This one is at 975. If you guys followed along, you guys saw the stuff inside of the box in our unboxing. But today we're going to do the full review. We're going to take a look at the features of both the standard card that referenced the design, the features that come that are different about the ASUS card, which features their super alloy power, features all their good parts, and features their overclocking stuff, which only ASUS has. So let's check out all the features, what's this card about, what it looks like, the power, the heat, and at the end of the day, like always, why it be worth your money as the end user. So like I mentioned beforehand, the ASUS card has a core clock of 975 megahertz. The standard reference design card has a 900 megahertz core clock. The card features 192 CUDA cores, and what the CUDA cores do is they actually show you all the nice features in games. Like in Hawk, you can see all the water very clearly using these features. You also get three 64-bit memory controllers. Now, this is the first card that NVIDIA's had that features one gigabyte of DDR5 memory. Previous generation cards had 768 or 1.5 gigabytes. Neither one of those was actually the sweet spot. This card comes in at one gigabyte, which is perfect. The card has a total TDP of 116 watts. Now, what this means is that you're actually cooling off 116 watts of power. The power is what actually makes the card and radiates the heat because the card takes all the power in, it generates heat as it runs. So the TDP is how much power the card needs to cool. Also, this card can be used in SLI. The card comes in at 8.5 inches and is four inches tall. So you can see it only requires one 75 watt power connector on the back, which is gonna be on most power supplies that you'll see today. Other than that, this card is, is changed from the reference design because it has all the features for the direct CU2, meaning that it's a direct copper interface, and this helps dissipate the heat away from the card 600% better than a standard cooled card. The Rio of the card is a little bit different than you see these days because not many people still include a standard VGA connector. Mostly it's just two DVIs and then your HDMI or display port depending on maker. But this card has a single DVI, a single VGA, and a single HDMI connector. Now that we've seen all the features of the card, we know how big it is, how much power it is, let's see how well it performs. The new 550Ti series card is going to compete directly head-to-head -head with the 5770 series from the people over at AMD. 
Both these cards come to market at about $140. Don't quote me on prices because getting sales and rebates, they can all change, but they're all going to be in about the $120 to $150 range, depending on the maker and manufacturer. And so in that price range, these two cards complete very close hand in hand. Now, if you're a fan of NVIDIA and you like all the features that NVIDIA has, then this new entry-level card is a really good card to jump in on. And the ASUS version is even better, being that it comes overclocked directly out of the box at 975 megahertz. It comes with all its good overclocking features. The card has the direct CU top, which actually keeps it running cooler. That makes it a very valuable thing. I think that NVIDIA has hit a very sweet spot with the 550 Ti. And the new DirectCU top version of the 550 Ti from ASUS is a definitely editor's choice product. If you're someone who doesn't have a lot of money, but still wants to play your games at a resolution of 1680 by 1050, this is the perfect card of choice. If you use anything bigger than a 22 inch monitor, you can always buy two of these cards and do SLI mode and get all the features in that mode as well. But for entry level, 1680 by 1050, this card has all the features and flavors that you get from Nvidia and it has a great price. Excellent job.